Well, we're joined now by the host of Overdrive, Brian Hayes. So, Brian, that's now six straight game, seven losses for Toronto. How would you say this heartbreak for Leafs fans ranks compared to past years? Uh, I don't think it ranks nearly as heartbreaking as past years because I think Leaf fans are numb to this now, Sarah, quite <laughs> frankly. And I, I think that's the worst indictment you could possibly give to a team like the Maple Leafs that their fans have reached that point where they're numb to it. They're not overly surprised. Of course, it's it's cruel. <laughs> it's unnecessary, right? The, the Leafs were down 3-1. I think most Leaf fans were prepared to pack it in. And to the Leafs' credit, they battled incredibly hard Game 5, incredibly hard Game 6, and they, they battled incredibly hard in Game 7. But when you go down 3-1, it's very difficult to win three straight. And in the end, it's the exact same result. We just saw the board. We know the history. They've lost a lot of games over the last 11 years, and four of them in the same building. 2013 was probably the most heartbreaking and, quite frankly, most embarrassing scenario for Leaf fans up 4-1 with 11 minutes to go. The biggest choke job in NHL history and certainly in Leaf history. That one really, really stings. But in 18 and 19, it still felt fresh with Matthews and Marner and Nylander and Tavares. And it felt like this team is going to break out at some point. Five years later in 2024, it doesn't feel like that anymore. I don't think Leaf fans are sitting here saying they're real close, that this core can actually get it done. So from a heartbreak standpoint, defining it that way, uh, I don't think it compares to years past. Well, you mentioned how they battled in this particular series with the Bruins. They did storm back from being down 3-1 in the series before ultimately falling short in overtime of Game 7. So I do have to ask you, are there any positives the Leafs can take out of this? Well, at, at the end of the day, you still have to assess it. If you're Brad Trey Living, if you're the GM, you've got to assess your team and try to figure out what worked and what didn't work. And I thought Matthew Nyes was great. He's a young player. He's going to be a part of this team for a long time. Joseph Wall was great in the two games we saw him play in. The problem with Joseph Wall is he's, he appears injury prone early in his career. Can you rely on him? The best ability in pro sports is availability. But when he played, he looked like a big game goalie, and they're going to need that at some point. I can't see Samson on being a part of this team in the future. If they're going to lean on Joseph Wall, he's got to stay healthy and he's got to play big. But he looked really good in those two games. William Nylander is a playoff performer. I think we've known that before, but they just gave him a massive contract eight-year deal they're fully committed to Willie and Nylander showed up even though he missed the first three games uh, I thought defensively they look good I think McCabe looked good I think Benoit looked good so there are pieces here that are new pieces or younger pieces that they can grow with that Brad Trey living once the dust settles and the emotion finally subsides he can look at and say okay I like that and hopefully it can carry over in the future Okay, Brian, and as we look at the bigger picture here, it's been 10 years since Brendan Shanahan was brought in as president of the Leafs to turn this team around, and the Leafs have won just one playoff round during that span. So how much change should Leafs fans be expecting this offseason? Well, I don't think the guy to ask is Brendan Shanahan. I think the guy to ask is Keith Pelly. This is where Keith Pelly comes into focus here, the new president and CEO of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. A decade ago, Tim Laiwiki showed up. Tim Wiley-Wiki was the one that hired Brendan Shanahan. He hired Masai Ujiri. He hired Tim Bezbachenko of Toronto FC. And when Laiwiki showed up, he said, what's going on here? Things have to change. This isn't good enough. We're not close enough to winning. And he changed everything. He changed the attitude completely. And I'm curious if Pelly will do the same thing. Because if he looks at Toronto FC, he might think that, although they have John Herdman now. Masai Ujiri and the Raptors, they're a mess. And I'd have to believe Pelly will look at the Leafs and wonder what you just stated. Brendan Shanahan's been here for a decade. He's done a lot of really good things. But in pro sports, a decade is an eternity. And the brass tacks are, you've won one round. And I would assume if Shanahan stays, I'm not convinced there will be that much change. I'm not convinced he sees it as something that needs to happen because he's never seen that in the past. He has been pot committed to the core four. He's been pot committed to his philosophy on what he believes can win. So if Shanahan's here, I'm not sure how much is going to change beyond Samsonov going. Probably Sheldon Keith, but that's the coaching carousel in the NHL. That happens all the time everywhere else. If Shanahan goes, then everything is on the table. And if Shanahan's not a part of the program in the future, and I'd say it's 50-50 at this point if that's the case, again, it's up to Keith Pelly in ownership, then you could be looking at the core four finally being broken up and this team looking different for years to come. 
Well, and Keith Pelley has some serious roots in Toronto. He understands the fabric of this city. Meanwhile, Brian Boston's going to face Florida in the second round. The Bruins swept the season series with the Panthers. Thanks for joining us.